Hi everyone, it's Karina. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. I actually just started this video um, on Sinistry, Twin Flames, and Soulmates for my YouTube channel. Got a little interrupted, so I figured that I would come back as an audio just to give you guys an introduction to what I'm about to do on YouTube, which I'm going to be honest, I never really wanted to do because Soulmates, Twin Flames, Life Partners... Is a very big topic. A lot of people have specific choices on what they think a soulmate, a twin flame is, and how to find that in astrology. And, um, you know, being a person that's in a relationship, it's just a very in important topic. And I always want to put my best foot forward. So I'm, I'm coming to you guys to talk to you about the planets in Sinistry. And I want to start with my disclaimer, you know, because there's a lot of information circling around the internet about soulmates, twin flames, life partners, and astrology. I'll tell you one thing. A lot of these astrologers, they're not in relationships, okay? <laughs> some are, but some of them aren't. And so I wanted to finally put my two cents in about this, um, being that I'm in a relationship and have been for over 10 years. Um, but, you know, for me personally, it's something that I've always kept more private and more important to keep sacred and private, which is, um, I don't know if that's even been beneficial for me because this kind of work is something that I feel like a lot of people need in their relationships. And um, I think that my sharing it and talking about it actually helps me to even understand the topic even more. Um so what I'm here to say is, it's not that I don't believe in twin flames and soulmates and and whatnot. It's just that I think that in the astrology community, it, it's put on a pedestal. It's put in this place of glorification, especially soulmate idea. Um, but really what astrology is, is mathematics. It's, it's, it's a breakdown of actual um, positions of planets angles that create more harsher relationships to one another and being able to understand these aspects in your sinistry chart it's not about putting your relationship on a pedestal to me and calling it a soulmate relationship to inflame it's just about like do you want to make this work or not and i think that that is why i'm doing this today because um i want to share with you guys my knowledge and you know my channel is called I of Karina because it's all coming from my perspective so this is my spin my twist on sinistry which is you know f all the bs and all that fantasy you know happy ending story stuff that people put with soulmates let's just talk about you're in a relationship you really love that partner but you guys have fundamental differences that you can't see with your naked eye and so you can turn to your astrology synastry to look and see what those differences are what is um, happening between you two what are the dynamics between you two that's causing friction or that you're here to learn and whatnot okay because it's one thing to be like you know we have a soulmate connection and our vertex is here but what about the times when you guys aren't getting along? How to make relationships last? That's my intentions behind this. Um, do you want it to work? Exactly. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining. So let's go through the planets. And like, if you know you're a synastry, if you're in a partnership, let's talk about all partnerships. So um, you might be in a romantic relationship you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, you might be dating someone, you might be in a marriage like I am, right? Um, friendships is also extremely important. Um, parental, children, right? Sinistry is not just with your romantic partner, it's with anyone. So uh, let's add that as well. So if you're joining and you just want to understand your relationship dynamics, understanding Sinistry is a big deal. Now, I know that it would be so great if I could show you guys how to look it up here in this audio, what I'm going to do is just talk about the planets. I do have a video on my channel where I show you how I look it up. Um, and if you really need that, then I will link that video um, to the comments so that um, you can learn how to look up your synastry. But I also just recommend to subscribe and join my YouTube because the amount of information that I'm going to spit out while I'm in this uh, mode right now is going to be even more than I've ever done. Um, 
I want to be able to uh, embrace this topic while I'm in the spirit to do so. So I'll be pushing out a lot um, of synastry topics. So let's just go through the planets. Um, so looking at your sun, okay? So sun synastry is really great because it helps to um, stroke the ego and make the other person feel, you know, really alive, make the other person feel seen, okay? If you have sun synastry uh, harmony, which is if you have sun uh, in conjunction to each other, if you have suns in trines to each other, if you have suns in um, sextiles to each other, uh, you'll really do well with understanding one another. But people who have suns in square and opposition to each other, they're often, these relationships, they're going to face with not feeling seen by the other person, okay? Um, there's something that um, they're really needing the person to see about them on a surface level. Maybe it's like, you know, how I, I put myself out there, how, how I identify myself or, um, you know, sun is also career. So reputation and pride. So, um, maybe the people, you know, maybe you might have friction with like what you take pride in. Right. So, but the biggest thing with sun is being seen and people who have, um, synastry issues with, um, the sun, often they're going to say that their partner doesn't really, um, know them. Okay. Uh, and this is knowing them on a more, um, me in the world basis. Okay. Me and my experience and existence in the world. Now, the same thing could happen if you have moon, um, issues. Okay. So moon harmony, moon harmony, I'll make sure I do timestamps on these moon harmony, um, aspects, they'll feel felt emotionally c capable of, um, nourishing one another, right? So moon aspects would be conjunctions, of course, trines and sex house, right? Conjunctions, trines and sex house usually are, not usually, are your most enjoyable because they create mathematical harmonies to one another that complement one another. Usually they're going to be, if it's trying in the same element, right? So things like that, where they understand each other, a try, you know, an air moon, um, and trying to your partner's air moon means that you both are nourishing each other intellectually, right? So a moon is going to be felt very well, but moon in disharmony in synastry, like let's say if your partner's moon squares the partner's moon or opposes the partner's moon, they too will, will have some issues with feeling felt or feeling seen, but seen in a more emotional and what are my emotional needs are way. Because the moon is more darkness, so the moon is more of our hidden aspect of ourselves. So it's going to be more like, I don't feel like you see me or really understand what it is that I need in this relationship. So looking at the moon's aspects to one another, well, if you're having those kind of issues, you want to look at the moon aspect, allowing you to see that you guys are mathematically in disharmony and you can fix that by handling the, um, by understanding the difference first, right? It's like in a relationship, if you guys fight over things, you, you don't have anyone to weigh it out or mediate, you know, who is right and who's wrong. But when you look at astrology, it's not going to tell you who's right and who's wrong. It's going to say, look, you, there are just clear differences. This is why I also don't abide by right and wrong, because a lot of times we use right and wrong in a wrong way. <laughs> Meaning like there's definitely a right and wrong when it comes to, you know, what we accept in this world and what is important to us, especially when it comes to values. There's certain right and wrongs that we as humanity are typically going to abide by, right? But we still you overuse it in which um, in a relationship, right and wrong um, is very skewed and it's over abused. But this is why the astrology can help you to eliminate right and wrongs and just see that it's coming from different points of views challenging aspects to planets like squares and oppositions can create an even stronger bond. And in my opinion, if you really want it to work, um, understanding one another by their, um, actual uh, differences is the key to, um, making you guys last even stronger. In fact, a lot of the times relation, some relationships need this kind of um, pressure in order to stand the test of time. 
and the work that is given in by saying, okay, this is what he needs. This is what she needs. And how can I give it to them? So that is your moon energy. Okay. And that's moon and synastry. Now, what about Mercury? Now, Mercury is actually going to be one of the planets that I feel like moon and Mercury. These two planets are the ones in synastry where a lot of relationships mess up. Okay. They really just mess up because, um, we just don't understand each other. Okay. Mercury is your comprehension. The things that you, um, understand about the world, the, the skills that you have developed and which, you know, helps to feed your identity, helps to feed you, um, and how you operate and move in the world helps, helps to navigate you. Right. So if you guys have, um, really harmonious Mercury's, then your conversations are going to be really enlightening and a lot of fun. And, you know, Mercury is where you joke with the, with the, one another. So like a relationship that has a lot of like fun jokes, inside jokes between the two of them, that's going to be mercurial energy. Right. And so if you have, um, conjunctions, trines, and sextiles to your Mercury, then you guys comprehend and joke and do things very well with one another. Um, you comprehend things very well with one another. You also might share the same skill sets or um, complementary skill sets. You know, like if uh, if the woman likes to uh, repair toilets, then, you know, maybe the guy likes to... Uh, you know, fix the drain. I don't know. Like you both can work on the same thing and have similar skills that, um, you know, focus you guys on the same thing. So Mercury can be a really good placement, um, that helps a relationship to last very long. But what if your Mercury is in square to your partner's Mercury? What if your Mercury is in opposition to your partner's Mercury? So squares challenge and create a big, big, uh, um, conflict because a square is actually the nature of them is actually similar. If you're going to have a square in any planet, it's because, um, the modality is the same, right? So it, it's very interesting astrology. I mean, it shows you that if your elements are the same, then you guys are in a trine, right? So if your Mercury is trying the other person's Mercury, that means your elemental, um, is, is, on, is on par, right? So air, trines, you know, water trines, which is emotional comprehension, emotional intelligence, um, air trines is social intelligence. Um, you know what I'm saying? Earth trines is practical intelligence, you know? So these, these elemental trines, they just work so well, but a square is the same modality. So it's like, why do, why do we have the same modality, but we don't get along? Because the modality is what creates the squares and the modality is what creates the friction, but also makes the whole wheel, the whole zodiac wheel be what it is. So I, I hope I'm not going too off of tangent, but for instance, a Mercury squared, another Mercury means that they're probably both either in the fixed sign or they're both in a mutable sign or they're both in the cardinal sign, right? And because you are both the same in regards to the modality, you both are comprehending things in the same way, which actually causes more challenge, right? So let's say if you both are very fixed in how you comprehend the world, right? Because you're, both of your Mercury's are fixed, then you can't understand each other because your Mercury's are in the same modality, right? If your Mercury's are both um, mutable and they both like to change and adapt, then you might change and adapt away from each other because your comprehension is constantly changing and adapting and you're not going to see one another for what each other is seeing, saying and speaking and expressing themselves. You're just going to move away from them because you're, that person is challenging you. They're changing as you are changing and you're both are changing apart. Okay. So the squares and the opposite, the squares are really important because it's probably one of the most challenging ones. The oppositions can also be extremely challenging, but what, what's great about the oppositions is that at least you can see each other in a square. You can't see like mathematical angles. You can't see the square. It's like this, it's like, um, in a movie when you've got like 
two people, in, you know, ready to fight each other or somebody broke into your house or, or something like that. Let's just say we're in a movie. Somebody broke into your house and the, the bad guy is around, is on one side of the wall, right? And you're on the other side and you guys are both on that corner. So you both like, if you just move your arm around the hook and point your knife or your gun or whatever, um, you're going to get them. But you can't see them because you guys are both on the corner. I, I, don't, I hope that this is making sense. So that's square. It's like you can't see each other. But in the opposition, you, you are so different, but you can clearly see each other because you're looking directly across the table from each other. So Mercury in oppositions, you can see the difference in comprehension, but you're just fighting for your own um, reason to be right or you're fighting for your own reason to be understood. You're fighting for your own reason to say what you want, despite how the other person might comprehend it or not. So oppositional Mercury's, you're just willing to be different and there's nothing else to do about it. So when you understand the squares and the oppositions it's like an attitude choice right if we took it out of astrology it's a choice of attitude because it's like i see you i just don't want to change for you or i see you i just don't want to um you know be in companionship with you on this subject because a companionship would be a conjunction conjunctions they're together they're in companionship but when they're in opposition to one another, they want to fight for their, their own way of being and they want to protect themselves from their own way of being because that's what happens when you fight somebody, right? So that's the natural tendency of oppositions. It's the natural tendency of squares. So this is what um, you have to understand that the biggest thing when you look at your partner's chart and you guys see that your Mercury's are square one another or opposing one another is what is my attitude adjustment going to be? The minute that that attitude adjustment is adjusted, now you have somebody who um, you know that you're different than them, right? Because you square them. You can't see it all the time, but you know that they're different. So now you're like, all right, well, let me be willing to just hear you out, right? That's Mercury. Let me hear you out so I can at least have you give you the chance to spill your position. And because I love you, I'm adjusting my attitude to not fight you or try to hurt you or oppose you when I can barely even really understand and see and comprehend your point of view. Right. And when it comes to the opposition, it's like, okay, my attitude adjustment is I understand that math mathematically we are going to fight each other over this, but how can I, um, you know, allow this to work in my favor to get us to be more in sync with how we understand the world to be right so the attitude adjustment is what is one of the first steps in healing a square or an opposition in a partner's chart okay so synastry is is for people who really want to be in a relationship who are really fighting for relationships in my opinion and it's not for people who fantasize about you know this fluffy idea of what a relationship is supposed to be okay and um, ah, I can go on and on about that, but let me just continue. <laughs> okay, so Mars in synastry is going to tell you about your sexual appetite, your will and activity to get things done, right? Your will to get things done, your, your passion for one another, your passion um, and your fight for the other person or the relationship of the other person, um, things like that, okay? Especially a, a lot of Mars in its most basic and core is your sexual appetite, basically. Okay. So, um, how you channel your sexual energy. Now, if you have Mars in harmony with one another, you guys are, excuse my language, fucking all the time. No problem. The sex is great. It's not an issue. Okay. Um, so that's Mars in, I mean, Mars in conjunction is probably one of the most satisfying um, but Mars and trine can also be satisfying. The trine with Mars is that Mars can get a little lazy in the partnership because it's just so easy. Maybe it starts off really well, but Mars doesn't have as much sustenance unless it's in, you know, a certain sign that gives it sustenance, right? So the trine works very well across the board, but that conjunction of Mars and the synastry, yeah, you guys are hot and heavy for each other all the time. 
and um, you understand each other's sexual needs all the time. Okay. And that's going to be um, very strong in your sinistry chart. But let's say that you guys have Mars challenging one another, you know, either in square or in opposition. Well, I'm just going to first say that Mars and Venus are two of the planets that typically lead to divorce, right? We see it in society that sex and money and values is what makes people grow apart. And in astrology, these aspects don't change, okay? So it doesn't matter what the soulmate stuff about if your vertex is here and his north node is there that you guys are meant to be each other. If you guys can fund fundamentally be in harmony sexually, there will be some sort of um, shift and change that needs to occur or the relationship is going to fail. Okay. And that's astrology doesn't say it just real life says it. Because, you know, the statistics of relationships lasting has a lot to do with finances and money, Mars and Venus. Okay. Now, um, so Mars and challenge to one another, you know, you might have issues where you're not sexually compatible. Maybe one person is going to be um, needing certain um, things that make them get hot and heavy that the other person is not able to provide for them or is just not willing to do because Mars is your will, right? Um, and or, right, it's also that just not, it's it's more than understanding. It's like a physical um fulfillment that is not being met on a very uh strong and basic level so when they're in square to one another they can't see each other and so you guys might have come from different sexual backgrounds where you know depending on the sign the sign will, and sign in the house placement will color even more but like um you know for instance i'm i just naturally think of like uh you know signs that are more about religion so if you come from a, a religious background and your mars might have some afflictions with somebody who doesn't right in which religion can hinder or help you to feel more sexually active this is just one example you know but that the idea is that the will right to make it work is not seen so you might be like i'm working my ass off what are you doing to make this relationship work Right. And that's because you can't see them because you guys are in a square. Now, when it's in opposition, you can see them clearly. But what are you doing and willing to do to actually make it work? Right. So oppositions are even more of an attitude adjustment, because at least in the in the square, the squares is you have this truthful issues that you just can't see each other. So the attitude adjustment is just willing to see but in the opposition, you clearly see each other. If you have Mars opposing Mars in a sinistry chart with your partner, you both see each other. You're just unwilling, Mars, to make adjustments for your partner. This can lead to a lot of issues, one of them being cheating, okay? Because cheating is, um, is blamed on Mars. Cheating is Mars's fault for most, most of the time. And our motivation for cheating comes from Mars because Mars is sex and Mars is will. So your will to have sex, right? So your motivation is going to be a big um, reason why you uh, stay in a relationship or not. How motivated are you to see the other person, right? Mars uh, opposed Mars is probably one of the strongest sexual attractions that could possibly happen if you are able to work together because either you're going to fight against each other or you're going to be so sexually attracted to one another that you um you know almost like the fight makes it even more sexier right or you can just be going in different opposition directions and you protect yourself from the other person and that's not going to work because mars is, is two things it's either we're fighting or we're fucking basically. So which one is it going to be? And Mars opposite Mars opposing Mars in the sinistry chart. That's basically what's happening. That's basically what the problem is. Okay. So understanding your Mars is a big thing. And then having the attitude adjustment to do that. Now, I feel that a lot of 
people who are watching this, you, it might be more one-sided because it might just be that you are the one who understands these things. So you're also going to have to have a partner who's willing to know their Mars and do those, do this work. But that's clearly already understood in us having this conversation. Now, moving into Venus, which is uh, the last planet that I would like to talk about today, even though Saturn and Jupiter do play a major role. And on my YouTube, I will actually break down Saturn, Jupiter, and Sinistry through the houses. In fact, I'm going to break down all of the planets through the houses while I'm on this big Sinistry kick because it won't last very long because my moon is in Gemini and I'll get bored very easily. Sorry for the rant, <laughs> but we're going to end it with Venus because Mars and Venus are the signature planets that when in affliction and in a problem stays in a relationship, the relationship falls apart. Okay. Coming from a Taurus, you know, who typically holds on to relationships, I'm going to give you guys the spill on my planet. We're going to, I'm going to share with you the reason why Tauruses are one of the best at relationships because Taurus and Taurus knows, Libra knows too, but Taurus actually is willing to do the work because Libra's cardinal and Taurus is fixed. Okay. So they're both ruled by Venus, right? But Libra is very shallow Venus, even though she's more sophisticated in her ability to exude her beauty. She's not as sophisticated in her ability to mother, nurture, and, and tend to a relationship as much as Taurus is. Okay. Why? Because Venus is cardinal, which is the initiator. Um, so she initiates love through her beauty, but Taurus is the fixed sign. Taurus is the one who maintains stability in relationship. Taurus is the one who fixes relationships. Taurus is a fixed sign. So now we're going to look at their ruling planet Venus, which is one of the main culprits of if it is in an affliction in a sinistry chart is going to cause a major breakup. So Venus um, in harmony, clearly, you both are naturally attracted to one another. You both like the same types of um, art, the same types of food. You know, you, you complement one another. Venus in conjunction, you're you're just great lovers, right? Venus in trine, um, this could be, this is definitely, to me, I think of food because trine is about, you know, just the natural, natural, so natural, right? So Venus in trine in a sinistry, you guys are just naturally in harmony with one another. You compliment one another. You see what the other person wants. You're willing to give it because Venus is the attitude adjustment because it's the people pleaser. It adjusts its, its attitude for the other, right? So you're willing to do these things for your partner. You're willing to please your partner in these harmony states. So what happens when Venus, what happens when Venus is in a square in a sinistry chart or in opposition, right? This is where we're going to have, um, like first looking at the square, they're both standing on different sides of the corner. So because they're standing on different sides of the corner, ready to attack because they don't understand each other, right? Or don't want to nurture, don't want to please one another. That's the thing with Venus. When it's an affliction, it doesn't want to please the other person, right? So um, I don't want to please you. I don't see what you need to be pleased. And I don't want to do it anyway. That's Venus in square to Venus in the sinistry, right? These could hurt your feelings. This is why Venus, the planet of love, in affliction is one of the reasons why relationships don't work. But if you had the ability to say, okay, I'm going to change my attitude because I understand our mathematical, it's down to the mathematical angular differences, right? There's something about you challenging me that I needed in my life anyway. So this is where... I'm done. Like, actually, I'm done. I'm done with the twin flame soulmates thing because it doesn't talk about the real nitty gritty, which is you don't make it in this relationship. You're going to go to another relationship and yeah, either it will be bliss or you will, um, you will reap the same karmic issues that you had in the last relationship because you weren't able to make these attitude adjustments in the first place. Okay. Now, if you do go to another relationship and let's say you know, your first one, your Venuses were afflicted. And the second one, the Venus is in more harmony. Well, then maybe, you know, you did do the work. And so you attracted somebody that is more um, going to help your Venus, right? So it's not to say that I'm saying like, yeah, you should stay in a relationship where you're going to be unhappy either. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it's important to understand that this can help you. This could help you to save your relationships if you want them to. 
or at least help you to learn how to navigate yourself in all types of relationships because you're not always going to get along with everybody. But the people that you keep close to, you want to have a, a really close understanding. And Venus is the attitude adjustment in wanting to please another person. And if you don't want to please another person, you have to really look at yourself and, and ask why, okay? So the astrology will show you the mathematics, but you still have to do the work in, in figuring out why and then do the willing work to actually make that work, to actually make it happen or break off the relationship. Now, Venus in opposition, you can clearly see what the other person is pleased by, what makes them happy, what pleases them, but you are unable to or un, unable or don't val, have the same value in order to actually fulfill that for them. So maybe somebody, you know, if we, if we look at it just as food, like maybe you're a super health freak, right? You got Venus in Virgo, you know, and the other person's got Venus in Pisces and they love, you know, ice cream, you know what I'm saying? So like, you're not going to get them, you know, the ice cream because you don't think that it's healthy. You know, this is just a very superficial example, but a very important example because this minor detail could be what is the issue in which you think that you know what's best or you can see clearly what they want, but you won't buy them the ice cream. You know what I'm saying? You won't give them what they want. You might even feel like you're spoiling them. You know, these are things that happen with Venus in affliction and sinistry charts. So um, I hope that this was a good intro to you guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to put the timestamps below so that you can click on the planet that you wanted, wanted to hear me rant about. And stay tuned to the YouTube channel. So much is going to be flooding out over the new year. And I'm really excited to share with you guys my point of view on astrology and how you can apply astrology to your life to really get what you want. Okay, peace and love. And I'll talk to you guys and see you guys very soon. Bye.